The second video in our demonstration series for the DocuWare Kinetic Solution for Employee Management will represent the recruiting process. Now that Simon has posted this position and it is available for people in the public to see, he's going to begin to get resumes and applications for this position. So there is available now, in this case, an online application form which I've filled out much of already. Uh, this is simply followed, it's a DocuWare form. It can be simply specified using a link, much as the uh, new hire requisition form was. It could be posted on the corporate side on the careers page or uh, made available through an internet, an intranet site for internal employees to uh, send in applications. But anyway, the document is filled out based on the title of the position being applied for, first name, last name, all of the pertinent information is, is put in here. And then there, it is required that a resume is attached and there's also a place to uh, attach references if some are available. And we just go ahead and submit this form. What happens now is the HR department, in this case Simon Stone, is gonna be notified by virtue of another task indicating now that there is a new application for review. So he can look at this document and either accept or reject it. And that would simply put a stamp on it and determine when the document uh, meets its retention date. <clears throat> but this document would now get stored into the file cabinet so it's available uh, for him to review at later times or whenever there's a position open. And in this case, we do have a position open. Resumes can also be brought into the system using traditional DocuWare methodology like dragging and dropping uh, or potentially even just uh, taking it from a, uh, an email account where you could have uh, an email connector bring the document automatically into the tray. But I'm just going to drag and drop in a resume in here and we'll go through the store process now. So Joe's resume is now stored in my tray and I have a store dialog that I can now execute in order to put it into the file cabinet. I'll be using one-click indexing as a way to uh, index this document. It's much uh, better than typing everything because it eliminates the potential for, uh, for typographical errors. So I'll select first name, last name. We know that the address, city, state. Now because the zip code doesn't match the format required, we required zip plus four. This will have to be typed in. The personal email address can be taken off this, uh, off the document as well. I'm gonna put in Simon's email address. This way we can see the emails being uh, generated and sent to the candidate. Skills are an area that I can take different skills off of this particular resume and add them so that if I didn't have an open position and this resume was being stored for future reference, I could use full text searches to locate specific individuals based on the skill sets that we selected. Phone number, I'll select off the resume, any comments, and ultimately the position or the job description being associated with this position. Once I've gone ahead and stored that document, I'll be assigned another task to review it. And at this point, I can either assign it to a decision maker to go on to the interview process or reject the, e the email or reject the resume outright. Now, at this point, it is fortuitous that I do have an open position. It happens to be for a, for a sales engineer. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I know that Elizabeth Cash was the requester for this particular position. I'm going to go ahead and assign this to the decision maker. Elizabeth Cash. This is going to begin a back and forth process where now Elizabeth is assigned the task of reviewing this resume to determine if she wants to bring this uh, candidate in for potentially a face to face interview, or maybe review them on the phone, or just even has the opportunity to reject it outright with no follow up or assign it to somebody else to make the decision. We're going to start off though by doing a phone interview. And what she needs to do at this point is any kind of instructions that she might have for the, uh, for the candidate that can be passed along 
or I'll just say we're going to do phone interview and then provide uh, three dates and times that she would be available to do this interview. Now, the reason why she's providing three is because she's not actually reaching out to and contacting the, uh, the candidate. All correspondence and all contact with the candidate is done through the HR department. So what happens now is this, as I said, is going to get flipped back to the HR people. And what Simon Stone needs to do at this point is contact the candidate and determine what's the best date and time out of the three options that will work for all the parties. Now, let's say at this point, the third at two o'clock is going to work. So the accreta bond date and time becomes eight, three at two. Oops. That's confirmed. And this now goes back to, yep, Elizabeth, because now she has the task of making a decision. At this point, she receives an email that indicates she's got a calendar event uh, on this on the uh, decided upon date and time to have a phone discussion with uh, with this candidate. Meanwhile, the candidate has also received an email indicating that he's got uh, a phone interview with Elizabeth on that same date and time. So she must decide she's going to hire, reject, or potentially do another interview. Now she liked Joe, but she thinks she needs a little more information. She'd like to get someone else's opinion. So she's going to suggest that Peggy Jenkins, one of her direct reports, uh, does a face-to-face -face interview with Joe. So now what's going to happen is Peggy is Peggy's going to become part of the loop. So Peggy has a task now to review this candidate, either by phone or in person, and now the directions that she got was to do a face-to-face. -face. So she, like Elizabeth earlier, needs to come up with three potential dates and time where she'll be available to do this interview. So she'll do the same thing. She'll provide three different dates and times and confirm that. And the same thing is going to happen as last time. It's going to go back to HR in order to reach out to and arrange the meeting with the potential candidate. So again, we'll just choose the middle one, eight, six at two o'clock. Peggy now has the task of making her decision because she has done now the interview the interview results indicate she is either going to recommend or reject. And either way, she's going to provide her comments because ultimately the decision maker gets involved or gets the results. And now Elizabeth can either continue on in this loop and assign someone else to interview them reject it based on any kind of feedback she may have received or hire. And we're going to say, we're going to go ahead and hire. We're good to go with this particular candidate. And the ball comes back into HR's court. Now what HR needs to do is we need to make arrangements to send the offer letter. So by whatever standard means the the HR department does their offer letters, whether it be by courier or electronically or by regular U.S. Postal Service, the offer letter needs to be sent. So once that offer letter is compiled and the offer package is put together, all we do is confirm that the uh, offer letter has indeed left the building and has gone to the customer or the, the candidate. And at which point we will enter into a waiting period where we are waiting for the fully executed off letter to be returned to us. So now we're waiting for the off letter to come back. Once we do receive it, then we simply agree upon what date uh, the employee will be starting. We'll go ahead and after a discussion with the employee, 
or the, I guess the new employee, uh, will go ahead and enter the agreed upon start date and confirm that. The last thing we need to do is close that open rec. So we have this open requisition that was submitted to start the process. We're going to go ahead and apply a stamp on this that said Joe Candidate has filled this position and his start date is September 2nd. That stamp gets put on the document and the open position, the open requisition is closed. Thank you for watching this demonstration. Look forward to our next session, which is onboarding and provisioning.